So, so you probably are familiar with the product rule for differentiation of a function of one variable, or rather for product of two functions of one variable. Now I'm going to do the product for partial differentiation of a of two functions. Both of them are functions of two variables, and I'm going to consider the product of these two functions. So f and g are both functions of two variables uh, with that real values, and I'm going to consider a point. So I'm going to first define the partial at a point, and a point could be something like x not y not. So what should the statement be? Well, the statement would be basically that the so there's going to be two two statements. One is for the partial derivative with respect to x, and one is going to be the partial derivative with respect to y. So it's going to say uh, so here's the product function f times g x not y not, and I'm taking at x and I'm taking the partial derivative with respect to x at x not y not. What should this be? Well, how does the product rule usually go? It's the derivative of the first times the second plus the first times the derivative of the second. Okay, but now instead of derivatives, I have partial derivatives. So what should this be? Uh, f sub x of or at the point. Yeah, x now y now. Mm -hmm. Times times g of the point. Yeah. Plus. Are we here? Yeah, plus? plus f of the point by g sub x at the point. Okay, and and now this is just a statement. Now there's also a conditional aspect to it. What would the conditional statement be? It would say that if the right side exists, so does the left side. Now, what do you need in order for the right side to exist? Well, you need that f and g are both defined at the point. F sub x is defined and g sub x is defined. If if so, if all these four numbers are defined, then the left side f times g is also differentiable at the point, and the derivative is given like this. Okay. Uh, oh, there's there's one more, right? The partial derivative with respect to y. How is that going to be different from the from the x case? Uh, all sub x becomes a y. Sure. That's all. Nothing else changes. So, so the the only change is that the uh, instead of subscript x, you have subscript y. Okay. Now the next one I'm going to talk about version is I'm going to talk about is is a generic point. So the generic point. I, I won't write this down. It's basically going to be the same thing, except I'll just use x, y instead of x, not y, not every. Because I'm just doing the general portion. I'm not even going to bother writing that down. But it's going to be the same thing as these two, except I'm just going to write x and y instead of x, not y, not. But I'm not going to write. I would write that if I did. Uh, the third version is the point free version. Point free means I don't write the points x, y. I just sort of assume that it's, that they're there. So this is a really short version, right? It says f g x is what should this be? F x g plus f g x plus f times g x and f g y f y g plus f g y f y times g plus f times g y. Okay, so that's that's the point free version okay now now you can also imagine that you can do something very similar for functions of more than two variables right the idea will be that 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 basically just wherever you have the original product rule you just replace the occurrence of the of the derivatives by just the relevant partial derivatives okay and all of these have their correspondence so that all they all have this conditional aspect to them I mean by that, I mean if the right, wherever the right side functions exist, so do the left side. Now it could happen that the left side functions actually, uh, the f g is, is x different, if you just to x at some points where the right side doesn't exist. So that could happen. Uh, but, but where the right side exists, the left side exists and they're equal.